Hi guys, Phil Graham from DiabeticMuscleAndFitness.com and I want to run you through the biggest reasons why your blood glucose goes high during weight training. Now many of you guys will want to build muscle, you'll want to get lean and every single time you go into the gym you'll, you'll come out and you'll wonder why has my blood glucose gone up? And you maybe haven't eaten any carbohydrate, you have went in on a normal blood sugar and you can't understand why it suddenly spiked. Well this video is going to explain exactly why that happens. So let's look at the number of reasons behind that. First of all, we have to consider the activity that you're actually doing. Weight training is what we call high intensity exercise, and it uses what we call a glycolytic energy pathway. That means it relies on carbohydrates for fuel. Now, in that sense, a lot of carbohydrate is stored in the muscle and in the liver. When you strength train, it's a stressful activity. It activates specific hormones called corticotropins or stress hormones. And these include the likes of adrenaline, cortisol. I'm sure you've heard of, heard of cortisol. That basically ramp up the production of glucose from your liver. And if you live with type 1 diabetes, you will not have any insulin circulating in your system. But your liver will constantly produce glucose. And it's very important to realize that when you take your basal insulin or your background insulin, that that works to keep that liver's production of glucose under control. Some of you may not use basal insulin, but you will know fine and well if you fast or don't take food for a prolonged period of time that your blood glucose will go up. That's basically your liver creating glucose to pump it into your bloodstream for day-to-day -day activity. Now, when we look at strength training as an actual activity, what we see is an increase in these stress hormones, which increase the production of glucose out of the liver. We also see other things like the Cori cycle. The Cori cycle is basically a process whereby lactic acid from strength training is converted into glucose and put back into the blood. And as a result of that, that can spike glucose levels as well. So if you're type 1 diabetic and you don't produce any insulin like me, what will happen is your glucose will climb and climb and climb and climb and climb if you do not have any circulating insulin out there. There are other things to consider as well. Illness, infection, disease, other things that may be going on with you, high levels of emotional stress. These all trigger the same stressful response that increases the production of these glucose hormones. Now, Whenever we look at other things, we could have a faulty insulin pain, we could have a pump disconnect, all of those things are possible. Especially guys that are putting on belts and then putting on a pump and trying to uh, you know, rely on the pump to control the blood glucose levels, but if the pump's trapped, then there are gonna be issues. So it's very important to realize that the potential for your blood glucose levels to increase during weight training is highly probable and also high intensity interval training as well, on the likes of an assault bike, a spin bike, a rowing machine, some plyometric stuff. In fact, there's research to support using short bouts of high intensity interval training to actually spike blood glucose levels up when they're marginally hypoglycemic. And I actually use that sometimes whenever I'm trying to get lean to prevent me from consuming extra calories from confectionery or sugary goods to bring my blood glucose up. A short bout of high intensity interval training can spike it to the point where I don't need any of that. So it's very important that you monitor your blood glucose levels both during and after training. And realize with high intensity training that there's often a slump later on down the line a few hours afterwards whenever these hormones wear off. So it's very important to be mindful of your food consumption and your insulin timing at that particular time. And also as well the fact that you've maybe trained a particular muscle group and the blood flow in that area may be high which will facilitate more rapid onset of your drug more rapid onset of injectable insulin basically. So it's very important to consider those factors if you want to maximize your blood glucose control and prevent complications in the long run. And like I talk about in my book, The Diabetic Muscle and Fitness Guide, keeping blood sugars in a very tight range is essential for maximizing performance and muscle growth. So guys, I hope you found that useful. There's a ton more information over at diabeticmuscleandfitness.com. And I'd love you to join the Facebook group. Just click over to Facebook, request to join the Diabetic Muscle and Fitness private group. And also, if you love this video, click like and subscribe so you're subscribed to the next one. There's going to be tons of info coming at you guys. Thank you.